I catch and harvest and grow a lot of produce and I always have for a long time anyway. Diving, catching fish, we're getting abalone, we've got cockles. That was the genesis, you know, it was, I wanted to grow for the family. Uh, COVID came along, let's be self-sufficient. That's our dinner tonight. This is hard times. Look, we've been trying to be as self-sufficient as we can. So last night we had the corn from the garden, we had abalone and some uh, fish that I caught. Tonight we're having cockle shells. Yeah, no, you, you let them sit there for a day and that cleans all the little gritty bits out in the salt water. But this is the garden. I was researching it before the virus really hit. So it was something that I had in mind. COVID-19 came along and I wasn't sure if it was an opportunity or not. I wasn't really thinking of it that way. For me, when I saw the hysteria over COVID-19 and you know this panic buying and the toilet paper scenarios and all this sort of thing, I was just confused. I thought, wow, this is bringing out an interesting side of humanity, isn't it? Yeah, well, Tans and I talked about it. So well, is now the right time to release a membership? It was more a question, should we stall it? But I said, no, well, let's give it a go. And the response has been incredible. I think the timing was perfect. People just want holistic, good, locally grown, spray, chemical free produce. I think they want any produce at the moment. People um, have made a decision and realised that they want A, to treat themselves a bit better and look after their health and be aware of what they're eating. And of course, there's a demand for home delivered produce and that's what we're going to produce. We're going to give them boxes, delivered, pick fresh that day. Yeah, it's CSA, which is Consumer Supported Agriculture. Essentially, like crowdfunding, you get a membership, they pay uh, in advance for produce that may not be ready for four or five months. It's, it's helping you get set up as a grower. It evolved quickly, as, as the virus did. Within a few hours, Tanya was, how many can you feed? <laughs> what do we cut it off at? I said, oh, she goes, 30. I went, no, 50. And I thought about it and went, oh God, we can't really do 50 yet, yet can we? I'm very lucky because Tanya does that sort of thing. Her living is graphic design and social media. She's a horticulturalist and she's got lots of knowledge as well. So she can post things on social media about our produce and what's happening. So we opened it up, we created a website. We've got some social media happening with other projects already. So we had a little following there, which was garden related. And the idea is to create this really lovely community feel, this group of people that are part of the membership that, you know, there might be some, hey, my beetroots are ready early. I'll come and deliver them for free. So it's about making people feel good and in turn, you know, you'll feel good as well. My photography is, is great and I love doing it, but there's a lot of space in between and can work and work and work and work at proposing ideas and putting, you know, week long grants in and just get that polite email saying, oh, thank you, it's very competitive at the moment. The last two years I've had to go away for five months of the year, it's away from my boys that are 10 and seven and my partner and everything. And, it, and it's kind of heartbreaking. But on the back of COVID, my work as a photographer has just ceased to exist. I've got nothing for months. I didn't think it would last as long as this, to be honest. And I didn't think the restrictions would be as intense and. I guess I wasn't, um, I was intentionally not trying to worry about it because I could see others were in a pickle, you know. I just isolated myself here and I, I kind of looked at it as a very positive thing and that is that it's an opportunity now. I mean, I don't have to get distracted with trying to fill out the next grant, find a new idea to propose to some organisation, worry about why someone hasn't emailed me back because of a job we spoke about a few weeks ago. But you know, you can choose to worry about it or you can, um, Invest every last cent you own in, in pig poo, <laughs> which is what I've done.
been hard work. Something's gone on with my ankle where I can hardly squat now because of all the weeding and the reticulation that I've done by hand. I've got carpal tunnel because of all the rocks I've moved. A little too close to an angle grinder the other day and the fingers have got a couple of stitches now. Yeah, I mean, I need to be 22 and I'm not. I'm, you know, well, well over double that, but that's part of it. And that's the exciting part too, the challenges and the mistakes. Because if it was all easy and it was always going to work, then you might become a bit complacent. It could get boring. I mean, it's been hard to get seeds. You've seen Bunnings, there just is nothing on the shelf. I got ahead of myself. It was a bit of a panic buy, I suppose, trying to get seed stock a month ago. Bought all these varieties, things like rock melons and um, you know, squash and tomatoes and so on, just in case there's nothing available for summer. I've got three or four suppliers, really good, great prices, they do bulk. Um, and the message when you ring them, saying that uh, they're not answering calls, they've closed down their website because of the COVID, they've been inundated and um, they'll get to it when they get to it. <laughs> so, so I don't know what to do there yet. This is the app that um, is going to basically help me out along the way as a beginner who doesn't really, I mean, you know, I've grown veggies for years, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Because up until now, all I've done is grown for our family. These are my crops. This is sort of all the winter going into summer varieties. I'm getting right into the soil biology as well, um, getting that carbon nitrogen mix. Too much nitrogen, a lot of the, um, the flavours start to become quite bitter in capsicums and you know cucumbers and stuff like that. Um, but you get that balance right and you get that real sweetness and that sort of organic homegrown taste that you don't get in the supermarkets. You know, it's rich with all the microorganisms. Already, you know, we've only been putting the, the loams and the manures on the sand for a few months and you can see the earthworms and all the little critters moving in. And this is what I love about market gardening and this regenerative agriculture is that it's all, it's not mechanised. You don't need big tractors, you don't need big paddocks and you don't need, uh, you know, this monoculture uh, two, three hectares of one variety kind of thing which destroys the soil. You've got, um, you've got this intense planting, you've got a large variety and, and you've got recover crops in between as well. The whole thing started because the kids showed an interest and I thought I'd encourage that. And of course, being, you know, that type of father, I've completely taken over. And uh, no, no, elbows out, it's my job now. So um, so the first thing we needed really, other than land to grow, this, um, grow the vegetables, is a greenhouse to, to cultivate and, and get the seedlings germinated, which is over here. It's a very temporary little greenhouse, but it's, um, it's mostly out of recycled materials. All the, uh, the pine inside, was from an old um, cubby that I had, which I just disassembled. And um, yeah, and this is all like just some timbers that I'd kept, some old um, decking. Yeah, this is all stuff we're growing from seed. But yeah, the idea is that once we take a tray out and plant it out into the beds, we seed the same tray. So we've got that staggering of planting. So that we've always got that variety ready. But the kids are just so into this. So the boys come out in the evenings and they'll, they'll have a little pre-dinner, snack on a cucumber or a carrot or a bean. Morning and evening, that's what they're doing. That was good. And it's great because, you know, they still love a screen like any kid does. So it's showing them there's other things they can do and, uh, and dragging them away from that a little bit. First thing they do in the morning is they go up and check on all their little areas. And I've had to fight them for areas too. They want more, they want more and more and more. And I'm like, oh, I need some. They're just, they're really um, excited. They're out here hanging out in this greenhouse far more than I like actually. They keep leaving the door open. There's going to be so many challenges we have to overcome 
For example, yesterday the boys and I um, did all these caterpillar tunnels and the idea is as soon as these brassicas come out of here, they go into those caterpillar tunnels and then there's no reason for a spray. There's ways to do it without chemicals. Oh shit, is that a hole? Hey, what's happened here, boys? Something's tried to get in. Bloody hell. Oh, a little bird. He must have got stuck in, and I reckon the cats have had a go at him. Little silver eye. God knows how it got in there. Because that certainly wasn't there yesterday, was it? Hmm. Ah, oh, look who's squashing my carrots. That explains the silver eye. Yeah, he sits up here thinking he's camouflaged in the carrots. Couldn't be more of a contrast and catches silver eyes. And look what he's done, yeah. You bugger. Can't believe it, him. What a shocker. He's pulled a hole in my net because of the bird must have got stuck in there. God knows how it got stuck. All right. You stay. Ah. Bad kitty. I'm really not in it to make money. I have to make some money because my inputs are there as well. But I really just enjoy growing and I'm loving the culture and the community that's coming in and, and we're attracting already in the first month. We had 30 members within a couple of hours, so we better grow some good stuff. But um, I'd love to see us provide for 100 families. I think that'd be a really nice way to, to fill your days and, and supply for the community as well. It's about doing something good. <laughs>